Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another creative cow tutorial and in the next lesson in our Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series, we're going to continue our look at settings and I talked a little bit in a previous tutorial about how I'm going to be going off in tangents and we're definitely going to be going off in a tangent in this lesson. We're going to talk about the bin settings. Now I know we already talked about bin settings in a previous lesson. What we're actually going to do is we're going to talk about bins specifically. We already talked about the settings like I said, but we're going to talk about the bins specifically and all the little bells and whistles that go along with bins inside of your project. And once you watch this lesson, you're really going to have a really good firm understanding of the organization you're going to need, not necessarily in your project, but specifically inside an individual bin to help you get the most out of your editing sessions. Now before we get in and talk about bins, I do want to talk just briefly about a lot of email questions that I get asking me about where people can find these lessons and more lessons that I do on Creative Cow. So I thought it's important that I talk about that first. Now for anyone that's looking for previous lessons in the Learn Avid's Media Composer tutorial series, what you can simply do is head into Firefox and you'll see that if I navigate up to here, I actually have the tab, the first tab here, you'll see that the web address is library.creativecow.net slash series slash learn avid media composer and you'll see inside of here you can come in and learn just about anything you might want to know about media composer you'll see we only got a few lessons in here right now but i'm telling you once we really get rolling we're going to have tons of lessons in here for you to really get up to speed and really it's not necessarily just about getting up to speed but it's about getting an in-depth knowledge of media composer more so than you would get from reading a book or even taking a course now, one thing I do also want to point out is that a lot of people are thinking, well, you know something, I really want to, you know, I want to learn a lot faster. And one thing I always tell people is that learning an application like Media Composer is kind of like building a house. You've probably heard the expression, you can't build a house without a good foundation. Well, the same can be said about learning Avid's Media Composer. You cannot learn Media Composer without a good foundation. Most people just want to get in and start editing right away. But if you don't understand what is going on behind the scenes in your editing, you're really going to get lost very quickly. So what I wanted to mention quickly is that if you do want to skip ahead a little bit, you can actually head on over to my section on the creativecow.net, which is found at leaders.creativecow.net slash leaders slash McAuliffe underscore Kevin. And what you can do is you can actually come in and find Avid's Media Composer tutorials quickly and easily because they're colored purple. And you'll see if I scroll all the way down here, you're going to find the six lessons that I did in the Want to Switch tutorial series and you'll see you can get in and power learn Media Composer. Lesson one, projects and user settings. Lesson two, digitizing and importing. Lesson three, bins and project organization. Lesson four, editing. Lesson five, effects and titling. And last but certainly not least, lesson six, outputting. It's not as in-depth as what we're doing right now, but if you want to get up and running really quick, this is a great way to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide Firefox here because it's time to get into Avid's Media Composer, in this case, Avid Symphony, and let's take an in-depth look at bins. Okay, so let's command tab into Symphony, and you'll see here's our Learn Media Composer project. What we're going to do is navigate right up to the top of our project window, and we're looking for the settings tab right here. And you'll remember in the first couple lessons, we talked about the audio settings and the audio project. And we even talked about our bin settings. Now, the bin settings are not something that we're going to be talking about. Why? Because, well, obviously, we already talked about them. What I actually want to talk about first is what these next things are here. You see, we have these things called bin view. But most people don't actually know what they do. And you'll see that if I double click, I get this bin view window. And I'm not really sure what exactly is going on here. Well, I think the easiest way to get in and talk about this is to actually open a bin that has some media in it. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is just head back on over to the bins tab. I'm going to hit Command and O on the Mac control and O for all my Windows friends out there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to navigate into my stock footage folder. And inside here, I'm just going to open my stock footage bin. I'm simply going to say open. And you'll see in here, I have a whole bunch of footage from Digital Juices, Video Tracks HD. You can see I can double click on any of them. And it's just some great looking footage. Now what I want to do here, since we're talking about this bin, is I just want to open everything up nice and wide. And you're going to see that we have a whole bunch of information in here, some of which might look a little bit confusing, a lot of which we're going to talk about in later lessons. But I wanted to show this to you right off the bat. This is what's called the untitled bin window. Now how do I know it's called the untitled bin window? Well, because the bin is telling me that right down here at the bottom. You'll see it's called untitled. Now you'll remember if I navigate right back here to my settings, 
I have these bin views. There's actually six bin views right here inside my settings. But how do I actually take a look at what these bin views are and exactly what they're going to tell me? Well, it's actually very easy. You'll see that if I navigate right down here to the bottom of the bin to the untitled word mark, I actually have a little drop down arrow that I can click on. And you're going to see that I now have those same six bin views that I had up here inside of my settings window. So let's just pick one here. Let's pick, oh, I don't know, media tool. I'm going to select media tool and I want you to watch what happens to the bin. You'll see as soon as I select media tool, the bin immediately changes to give me different columns for me to look at. Now, I know you're probably thinking, wow, that's a lot of information. You know, it's really great to have all that. But to be perfectly honest, in most cases when you're editing, you don't care about most of this stuff. And how do I know that you don't care about most of this stuff? Well, to be perfectly honest, I've been editing for a long time. And most of this stuff I use periodically. But there's a few columns that I do use on a regular basis. So why don't we create our own bin view that we can use for our standard editing functions. Believe it or not, the first thing I'm going to do is actually delete all of these bin views. Because remember, I can recreate bin views at any time and tailor them exactly how I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit delete on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. You'll see that the media tool word mark stays down at the bottom of the bin. And if I wanted to rename this, let's say I didn't want to call this media tool. Let's say I wanted to call this Kevin's media tool. So I'm just going to call this Kevin's media tool. You're going to see that as soon as I hit OK, not only does it update down here at the bottom of the bin, but you're going to see over here inside my settings view, I now have a bin view called, appropriately enough, Kevin's Media Tool. Now again, we're just going to come back. I just wanted to show you how that works for saving purposes. I'm going to delete that again. Because what I want to do is get in and actually tailor this bin to a view that I'm going to use on a regular basis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right down here to the hamburger at the bottom of the bin, and I'm going to click on it. What I'm going to do is navigate all the way up here to Choose Columns. Once I select Choose Columns, you're going to see that I now have the Bin Column Selection window, much like we saw before. And you're going to see that I have some of the parameters highlighted, like Audio SR. You'll see I have Audio SR selected in the Bin Column Selection, and I also have it as part of my Bin View. Well, what I want to do is actually just get rid of everything. I just want to have nothing selected right now. Because we're going to create what I like to call a standard clips view inside of my bin. And what we're going to do is we're going to use drive, we're going to use duration, I'm going to use end, and I'm going to use start. So let's just come down to start. There we go. And maybe we'll even take the tape number as well. And what I'm going to do is simply say OK. As soon as I do, the bin updates immediately to only show me those parameters that I had selected inside of the bin column selection window. Now you'll see that things aren't necessarily organized quite the way that I would like to have them organized because I have the clip name here, and then I have the duration, then the drive, and then the end, and then the start, and then the tape. I always sort of like to have things sort of in a logical way of thinking. I always like to have the name first, the start time code of the clip, the end time code of the clip, the duration, the drive it's on, and then the tape number. Well, that's actually very easy to rearrange inside of the bin. What I'm going to do is simply take the start column and I'm going to drag it right over here beside the name column. I'm going to do the same thing with the end time code and we'll leave duration next. You'll see that we have the drive next, which is Jesse, and we have the tape number last. Now you'll see right now these clips, because they were imported, don't have a tape number associated with them. But what if I actually wanted to get in and associate a tape with a clip that was imported and not digitized? Because once we get into actually capturing, you're going to see how we're going to associate digitized clips with tape numbers. But in this case, you'll see that I don't actually have a tape number, like I said, because this clip was imported. So how do I actually assign a tape number, or maybe in this case, a disk number? Well, it's actually very easy. What I'm going to do is simply navigate over here, and I'm going to select all the clips by hitting Command and A on the Mac, Control and A on Windows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up here to the clip drop down because obviously we're talking about clips. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate down to the modify parameter right here. Once I come into the modify parameter, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of options in here. Now we're going to talk more about the modify window in a later lesson. But the one parameter that I want to get in and adjust is obviously the set source option. Why? Well, because I want to tell Media Composer where this came from. And maybe this came from, oh, I don't know, disk 23. It doesn't even really matter where it came from. In this case, we're going to say that these clips came from disk 23. This way, if I ever needed to go back, let's say this was stock footage that I needed to at some point purchase. Well, guess what? I'm going to know where this came from so I can call up whatever stock footage house I bought it from and say, oh, okay, I used three seconds of this clip. Oh, and it's on disk number 23. What I'm going to do is simply say, okay, Media Composer is going to say, are you sure that this is what you want to change it to? 
then it's going to say, well, hold on a second. Are you really sure this is what you want to change it to? I'm simply going to say, okay. It's going to say, well, hold on. This is going to change what the source the clip refers to. I'm going to say, okay. And you're going to see now that the tape column has now been populated with my new tape number of disc 23. So this is a great way to get in and assign tape numbers to, let's say, music. Maybe your CD spines have, you know, numbers or letters on them that you want to easily identify where music came from, where graphics came from, where stock footage came from. Anything that doesn't have a tape number assigned to it, you can easily get in and assign one quickly and easily inside a Media Composer. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I created this cool bin view, but as you'll remember, I need to come down and say that I actually want to save this as clips and simply say OK. Now, obviously, over here inside of my settings window, I now have the bin view of clips ready for me to use whenever I want. Okay, now like I said before, there's a lot of stuff that we're going to cover in bins. So we're going to break this up into multiple lessons. And the last thing that I want to talk about in this lesson is what these icons here represent beside our clip names. You'll see that we have a little icon that looks like a film strip. Now obviously this is a clip icon, but what type of clip are we actually talking about? Well, most people try to get in and you know give long-winded explanations as to what this means. But I always figure sort of a legend is the best way to show it to you. And there's two ways that we can get to the legend to tell you exactly what type of clip this is. What you can do is navigate right down here to the hamburger at the bottom of the bin. And what you want to do is come up and choose Set Bin Display. Or what you can do is navigate right up here to our bin dropdown and come down to Set Bin Display right here. What I'm going to do is select that and you're going to see that what's now being presented to me is actually a legend of what types of clips are going to be shown inside of my bin depending on what I have selected. But you'll see this little film strip icon is actually representative of a master clip. You'll see that we also have sub clips, sequences, sources, effects, and so on and so on. Now what exactly does this set bin display do? Well basically what this command is doing is it's telling Media Composer what to show me inside a bin and what not to show me. So you'll see anything that's checkmarked here, for example, the master clips that we're working with. Now remember, a master clip can be something we imported or it can be something that we've digitized. Anything with a checkbox is what's going to be displayed in the bin. So if I wanted to have some fun with an editor and make him think that all his clips were deleted when they really weren't, what I can actually do is come up and say, well, you know what? Don't show me any of the master clips inside of this bin and I'll simply say OK and they're all going to disappear. But the thing is that they haven't really disappeared. They're still really there. Media Composer's just not showing them to me. What I'm going to do is navigate back up to bin. I'm going to come back down to set bin display. And I'm just going to turn the master clips back on. What this is actually very handy for is that once we get into titling and you see how titling works, you're going to end up with bins with different types of clips in them like master clips, sub clips, sequences, and even effects. And maybe you don't want to see what effects are in the bin. Well, you can simply disable the effects view inside of that bin and you're only going to see things like the master clips, the sub clips, and the sequences and not be bothered by a hundred versions of one title. But for right now, I'm just going to turn the effects back on. I'm going to come down and say OK and there are all my clips back in my bin. Now, in our next lesson, we're going to take a look at actual clips and we're going to see how we can get in and not only organize these clips, we're going to get a good visual representation of what's going on in these clips. And I'm even going to give you a little preview on how to edit these clips into a timeline. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.